Welcome to today's episode of Juicing the Numbers. I'm your host, Joshua Tracy. And I am Corwin Heller. And we're picking up right where we left off. Last episode, we on Monday, we had talked about what teams, or so what players, AFC, NFL teams would protect in the event that there should be an expansion draft. Today, we will be talking about who the NFC would protect if there was to be an expansion draft, given a certain set of circumstances that was previously established last episode, but we can just run through it again real quick. It's either, correct me if I'm wrong, eight players on offense and eight players on defense, or 15 total players plus a special teamer. It is 15 total players, including special teamers. Including special teamers. My mistake. Um, and only and no first-year rookies. Yes, so... Every player is available except for incoming rookies. This would be different if we were doing this directly before the draft. But since we're doing this in July, we got to mix it up a little bit. Um, I also just want to reiterate, we are not taking contracts into this. Only, um, only age. So, you know, if you're 33 years old, that might affect you. If you have, you know, one year left in your contract, that doesn't matter. All right, then let's dive back on in to this little, uh, not little, large project that you've <laughs> Very large. And let's talk about the NFC. Yeah, this was, um, this was probably like 15, 16 hours worth of uh, digging through 53-man rosters, trying to put this all together, and then pulling my hair out, trying to puzzle together a 50 or a 32-man roster, essentially, uh, with all these players, um, which thankfully adds up to roughly a full team's worth of starters. Um, but yeah, let's start with the NFC North and the Chicago Bears. Um, Tell me about them. We have Mitch, I'm sorry, Mitchell Trubisky, as he prefers to be called, Allen Robinson, Charles Leno Jr., Anthony Miller, Cody Whitehair, Bobby Macy, Trey Burton, and James Daniels. Um. Two of their best wide receiver, or sorry, their two best wide receivers, their pass catching tight end, most if not all of their starting offense. Mm, excuse me again, most if not all of their starting offensive line for this year, and their young franchise quarterback. Anything you got to say about this offense? No. Didn't think so. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, not a thing. On defense, we have, obviously, Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith, Leonard Fournette, Kyle Fuller, Eddie Jackson, Akeem Hicks, Eddie Goldman, and Bilal Nichols. This was much harder. The Bears' defense is so unbelievably deep, and they just have so many amazing players. Um, It was really just trying to spread the love around, uh, even out their position groups and everything, um, putting together a as much of a complete defense as I could with only eight players. We can move on to the Green Bay Packers, where we have Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, David Bakhtiari, Brian Balaga, Corey Lindsey, Lane Taylor, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and Jason Spriggs. Um, Again, just this is their entire offensive line. Devontae Adams, star wide receiver. Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. And coming down to it, I had struggled with myself trying to figure out whether or not I should pre- protect a guy like Jimmy Graham, who is a very good tight end, but is very much on his way out of Green Bay uh, due to age. Um, protecting MVS, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, uh, who is uh, looking to be their starting either slot or outside wide receiver. A guy like uh, Geronimo Allison, another good receiver any one of the running backs, or Equinemius St. Uh, Brown, I believe it is. Yeah, Equinemius St. Brown, um, who was a very skilled but has had some issues down the stretch. Um, I ended up going with uh, Marquez Scantling, um, in part because I think he has the highest ceiling matched with highest likelihood of sticking around Green Bay. It feels weird not seeing um, Jordy Nelson here. I know. I wish he stuck around just a little longer in the league so he could be a part of this because no doubt I would have picked uh, him to kind of be a veteran presence to maintain on this team. A little face of the franchise kind of deal. Yeah. I love Jordy Nelson so much. How can I you miss not? watching him play. 
Um, he just wasn't the same without Aaron Rodgers, like no. that connection. I know, you know, you could just give it the fact that he was playing with a lesser quarterback. He was one year older. He had some injuries. But you can't overlook the kind of chemistry that he had with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it was unreal. On defense, we had Kenny Clark, Mike Daniels, Preston Smith, Blake Martinez, Jair Alexander, Kevin King, Josh Jackson, and Adrian Amos. I typically, going into this, didn't want to protect uh, a ton of cornerbacks for each team, um, but I went with three, Alexander, King, and Jackson for the Packers just because of I loved all three of these guys going through uh, NFL draft prep uh, the past two years. I love all three of them so much. Josh Jackson was one of my favorite uh, cornerbacks two years ago. Uh, Kevin King was one of my favorite cornerbacks three years ago. Um, I just I love the ceiling that the three of them have, um, and I just wanted to keep all three of them together. Um, but other than that, we have a solid defensive line here, a couple good linebackers, and Adrian Amos, who is a very underrated uh, safety. Also a Penn Stater. Let's talk about a really expensive team. <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings. On offense, we have Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Dalvin Cook, Pat Elflin, Elfin, I can't pronounce his name, Josh Klein, Brian O'Neill, and Riley Reef. Uh, I wanted to protect as much of that offensive line as I could because, man, they need it, needed it these past couple years, and I think they'll need it in the future. Um, their young skill position core with Thielen, Diggs, and Cook, Kirk Cousins. Um, I didn't keep Kyle Rudolph because I felt like Irv Smith Jr., who they drafted this year, is – very clearly his replacement um they had contract issues i am not entirely sure if that's been uh completed with kyle rudolph yet um and i just think that it's not necessary to keep him with the other weapons they have on that offense um and they would be somewhat willing to allow him to go to this other team yeah i think that's one of those tough like you're probably right, you know, about letting him walk. But what about the fans? What do they right. think? He's been here forever. Everyone loves him. Those are things we don't have to worry about, but these teams and front offices actually do. Yeah. So I, I, I get your reasons, and I don't – obviously we'll never know what they think about this because this isn't going to happen, but it would be kind of <laughs> interesting to see if, if, if they would have or not. God, imagine if, like, they come out and, like – three months right before the season starts and it not three months but right before the season starts or whatnot and they say yeah we're going to do an expansion and we've already planned everything out and here it is if you had to put a second team in a city that already has one team where would you put it a second team in a city that already has a team um new york because the giants aren't an nfl team anymore they are a very good college team uh but in all seriousness um does it have to be one where a team already is? Yes. Ooh. Um, are we playing with a caveat that this team, we're already putting this specific team in San Antonio? Or no? No. Maybe Houston? Just because of how massive a city it is? Um, God, I don't know. Green Bay, because it'd be hilarious. <laughs> that would be really <laughs> fun. <laughs> 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 Did you ask that because you had that? No, you were I just thought about that, that now. My actual, oh my I actually god! I was thinking maybe Chicago because yeah. I know we talked about it before about you know people just love the Bears there so much, but yeah. they could probably get pity attendance. Um, man, this is tough. Green Bay would be funny though. Jacksonville Green. for the same reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe Miami because nobody cares about the Dolphins anyway. True. Um, I could see Las Vegas actually having a second Ooh. team. Well. I was actually going to say, for this season, only this could count, Oakland. Yeah, exactly. Because then once the Raiders moved, <laughs> they're still they a team already in have Oakland. the new team. Yeah. Fuck, that's actually a really good uh, thought process. Um, but anyway. I don't know. That's a good thought. Um, Vikings defense. Um, I actually want to go into this one a little bit deeper than we have the past couple teams. Lay it on me, Daddy. 
So we went with Mike Hughes, Mackenzie Alexander, Harrison Smith, Anthony Barr, Eric Kendricks, Linval Joseph, Daniel Hunter, and Everson Griffin. This defense is fucking stacked, as you rightfully know. Yes. And we're leaving out a very key player on this defense. Janoris Jenkins. Not Janoris Jenkins, actually. Um, do you have any idea who it might be? Um, oh, Xavier... Um, What's his name? Javier Bardem. <laughs> yeah, Xavier Rhodes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, former All-Pro cornerback two years ago. One of my favorite and honestly a top five cornerback in the league right now. He's great. But there's not room for everyone. And he is 29 years old. While Basically Mike Hughes dead. was a first round pick last year and Mackenzie Alexander was a first round pick, I believe, two years ago. Maybe an early second round pick. Um, and this is just one of those cases where age is coming into this as a factor. Um, Xavier Rhodes just signed a big contract expen- extension, making a lot of money. And although that doesn't count, um, it might still be a thought in their mind along with the age, which is a big factor. Um, and I know Mackenzie Alexander and Mike Hughes aren't necessarily up to the level that Xavier Rhodes is. Both have the ceiling to possibly reach that one day. Hughes probably a little bit more than Alexander. Um, But someone had to get left off the list. And like I said with Green Bay, not a lot of teams have a need for three protected cornerbacks. So Xavier Rhodes was quite literally the first guy I picked when I did the expansion draft because of how good he is and how good I project him to be again. Um, So, yeah. Anything you got to say about this team? Oh, they're just so good. They're just so good. Um, Losing a player might actually help them out good with their cap going forward. (laughs) You're not wrong. Yeah. um, Their biggest problem would be picking. This is the team where I think contract size would come into question the most yes. when choosing who to protect and who to, who to let go. Yes, I so. agree. Maybe in tandem with, like, the Rams? Rams would be an interesting one, too, yeah. I don't know. Who else is in, like, cap hell right now? Uh, just, like, looking through this list, the Bears in a few years, just because of how young all their great players are but they're not in it right now um, maybe, maybe the, the texans in, this, in a few years as well depending yeah on who they keep on defense the saints are oh, in that the same saints, boat of course. uh the eagles probably i don't know no one nearly as much as the vikings right now though yeah that's for sure so let's close out the nfc north with the detroit lions we have matthew stafford kenny galladay kenny galladay jesus christ taylor decker I wrote Taylor Deckers, but they only get one of them. Taylor's Deckhards. <laughs> Frank Ragnow, Carrion Johnson, Marvin Jones, Graham Glasgow, and Rick Wagner. Um, they have some pretty, really good players on this. Uh, Kenny Galladay, Taylor Decker, Carrion Johnson, Frank Ragnow. All really good young players. Uh, Marvin Jones is a veteran wide receiver for them, and they are missing out on that wide receiver depth um and then just trying to fill out that offensive line as much as i could Uh, i wasn't too difficult to do this uh not the greatest depth on defense we have darius slay quandre diggs gerard davis damon harrison ashawn robinson deshaun hand trey flowers and christian jones um I don't have a ton to say about this team, really, in general. I mean, Darius Slay is a top-five cornerback. Everyone else is just above average at best. In the history of the Lions, Corwin, there hasn't been a lot to say about anything. (laughs) Yeah, you're not wrong. (laughs) You're very much not wrong. Um, I'd be very comfortable just moving right right on. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, To a team that... Oh, almost fun. matches the lines of old in amount of sadness that they bring to the league. Uh, yeah, while the, having one good uh, running back. While having one good player. The New York football giants. Um, I'll just get this out of the way. They're not protecting Eli Manning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. So we have Saquon Barkley, Evan Engram, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, 
Nate Solder, Will Hernandez, Kevin Zeitler, and John Jalapio. Jalapio? Jalapio? Jalapenos. I don't care. Jalapeno. John Jalapenos. Um, they Jamie got some. Hot sauce. They got some good offensive line guys. They've got some decent pass catchers, and they have Saquon Barkley. They're not protecting Daniel Jones because he is a rookie and doesn't count. They're not protecting Eli Manning because he is very much not a rookie and isn't good. Um, there's really just not a lot going on with the Giants' offense. No. Um, they signed Golden Tate to a massive contract. For no reason For no at reason because he's the same player as Sterling Shepard in my mind. Um Evan Ingram is going to be their de facto X receiver this year. I don't see how he could be anything else but that. Oh, man. The, at some point, we should just have an episode talking shit about the Giants. We've like already they, had several. I know. But, like, they are genuinely probably the next team. <laughs> genuinely probably going to be the next team we put on par with the Browns of old. If they don't get rid of Gettleman soon. Yeah, fucking whatever. And defense, oh, isn't any better. They have Janoris Jenkins. End of list. <laughs> Sam Peel. <laughs> fucking A. You, you're not far off. Jabril Peppers, Alec Ogletree, Dalvin Tomlinson, Marcus Golden, Lorenzo Carter, and BJ Goodson. Again, much <laughs> like the Lions. BJ Goodson. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, that's a funny name. Man. His parents must be very religious and well-mannered and just really great people because they don't have a dirty thought in their mind if they thought naming their son B.J. Goodson was a good idea. Wow. <laughs> um, same thing with the Lions, though. They got Janoris Jenkins, who is used to be a really good cornerback, and a bunch of good but not great players. And that's really all I have to say about that defense. Uh, Sam Beal, we literally haven't seen play yet, but he was a you know, third-round supplemental draft pick last year that tore his ACL. Jabril Peppers, who is their fucking replacement for Odell Beckham Jr. Alec Ogletree. Like, there's nothing to say here. Let's just move on. Yep. Redskins. Another spoiler alert. Do not protect a quarterback. Uh, they had a couple sense. options too. Case Keenum, Alex Smith, if they wanted to hold on to him for no, some right, reason. No reason to. Yeah. Colt McCoy. Forgot if they, he was on that team. Yeah, they could take any one of those three and be in the same position as if they took none of the three. Yeah, um, true. Plus, they have a rookie quarterback of the future that doesn't need protection. So... No quarterback for the Redskins. They are also taking advantage of the 15-man total. So not a lot of guys on offense here. We have Trent Williams, Brandon Scherf, two phenomenal offensive linemen, Morgan Moses, Chase Roulier, Darius Geis, and Jordan Reed. Um, not a single wide receiver was protected because they have none that are worthy of being no, protected. Not a one. Uh, Darius Geis, another guy like Sam Beal, who we haven't seen play yet because he tore his ACL early last year before the season started. And Jordan Reed because he's the only reliable pass catcher when he's he healthy, which is saying something because he is never healthy. Never. So we went real deep with defense, which is... I f didn't realize how good their defense was it's because very good, it's yeah. phenomenal. We have George. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. We have George Norman, <laughs> Fabian Moreau, uh, who I spelled his name wrong. Uh, oh, and my Also, Landon oh. Collings. Landon. <laughs> Guys, you have no idea how late I was up doing these um, and how quickly I was trying to type through this. Fabian Moreau, not Fabian Foro, Landon Collings, not Landon Collins, Ruben Foster, Jonathan Allen, Matt Ioannidis, another high school classmate of old, Duran Payne, Ryan Kerrigan, and Ryan Anderson. You want to know a cool stat about Ryan Kerrigan that I didn't realize until today? Tell me about him. 
He is exactly um, seven sacks away from being the Redskins' all-time sack leader. What? Yeah, that's like some wild shit right there. I didn't realize he has been... Like, I always knew he was an underrated, if not great, edge rusher who just didn't get the love he needed because he's probably white. Well, he probably didn't get the love he's needed because he's white, because he definitely is white. Um, But, yeah, he's a phenomenal player for them. They are just so deep on this defense. Their front seven is phenomenal. Um, Their defensive backfield is good but not great. Um, But they do have some really good players back there like Landon Collins and Josh Norman. Yeah, they're probably hoping to do a a Chicago-style rebuild here. Very much so. And I don't think they are that far off. Um, Their offense is, but the defense is definitely there. Right, like they on offense though. Well, I genuinely, they did, I think they they're just a Dwayne couple. Haskins, yeah. yeah, like they're really just a couple wide Pass receivers catchers. away. All right, cool. We were on the same page on that whole sentence. All right, let's move on to the uh, Cowboys before we ruin this flow. Thank you for picking up while I was uh, swallowing some drink right there. Is that what you call it now? <laughs> yep. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys have Dak Prescott, Amari the Cooper. Dallas broke back mountains. You know what? I would absolutely vote to change their name to that (laughs) without question no hesitation for any consequences there dallas broke back mountains i absolutely agree (laughs) dak prescott amari cooper ezekiel elliott zach martin travis frederick tyron smith connor williams and lyle collins unsurprisingly dallas wants to protect their entire offensive line because believe it or not it's really fucking good shocking truly and then really like their offense has exactly eight good players on it, which is super helpful for this. Um, yeah, barely. Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott. Obviously, you're going to protect those guys, so it works out really well for the Cowboys there. Not much else to say on that. Defense was a little harder just because that that age factor did come into play, especially with this first player here, Sean Lee. Uh, how do you not protect Sean Lee? He is. Their defense and their team is so much better when he's on the field. You have to. Um, Sean Lee, Demarcus Lawrence, Byron Jones, Chidobi Awuzie, Jordan Lewis, Jalen Smith, Leighton Vander Esch, and Taco Charlton. Again, there's not much outside of these eight players. Uh, Taco Charlton was really even on the fence because he didn't perform last year. But you do not move on from your first round pick after one year. Nope. Unless you're the Steelers. Um, Moving on to the Philadelphia Eagles. We have Carson Wentz, Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Jason Peters, Brandon Brandon Brooks, excuse me, and Isaac Siamalu. Siamalo. Sorry. (laughs) Siamalo. Man, some of these names, like, I'm surprised I'm getting most of these names right, but there are some where I I apologize to players and fans alike, but not that sorry. Eh, Yeah, I wouldn't be. Um, They hold all five of their offensive line together. Um, I was stuck between Isaac and former Penn Stater uh, Stefan Wisniewski, um, who was a cornerstone on that offensive line during their Super Bowl run. But again, it just came down to age. Um, Isaac was just a, a handful of years younger, and that's important. Um, yeah, I mean, on offense, they have some other pass catchers that they could have kept. Uh, Dallas Goddard was their first-round pick last year, but when it comes down to it, they have Zach Ertz for a long time. They don't need a second pass-catching tight end uh, as much as they'd probably like to. Um, but that's just the way these things kind of fall. Um, so even though they'd like to keep them, the value just wasn't there. So... Let's move on to defense. We have Ronald Darby, Sidney Jones, Malcolm Jenkins, not Malcolm Jenkins, because again, I'm done. Dumb. Me and Sydney, Sydney <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Fletcher Cox, Derek Barnett, Brandon Graham, Zach Brown, and Rodney McLeod. Zach Brown like the band? Yes, the Zach Brown band. The entire thing all, protect all, all of them. like yeah. However, number of people are in this act. Yeah, probably. Less than 12. I've never heard a song or listened to a song like actively by the Zach Brown band. Not my style, but. No, no. Eagles can have them all. Why um, not? B- 
but yeah, a lot of young key pieces and a lot of old key pieces. Um, and it works out that the Eagles need them all to have one of the best defenses in the National Football League. Um, you got anything to say about the Eagles? Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, them dirty ass birds. Actually, not. They are not the dirty birds the Ravens are, but they're dirty for this fucking whatever. <laughs> Like, I've been talking so much, like, so much more than usual today that, like, I'm lucky I'm making any sense at all when I'm putting these sentences together. Yeah, for reference, if you listen to the last episode, and then this one, and then what we're going to be recording after this, the next one, is we're doing all these in one day, so. Which. we're pace- I'm pacing myself. Yeah. Who <laughs> does not have this luxury? No. So, like, from a scheduling perspective, that's really the best way to do it, and the only way to do it, uh. From a Corwin's sanity of me usually being the person that doesn't talk nearly as much as Josh. Point of this, um, I'm I'm fucked right now. Like I'm, I am about to go nuts. So I'm going to make you talk more during uh, this next episode. I'm game. Tell me about the Saints. Yep. Let's move on down to the NFC South, where we have the New Orleans Saints keeping Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Tem. Teron Armstead, Andrus Pete, Traquan Smith, Ryan Ramzik, Drew Brees, and Teddy Bridgewater. Ooh. So this one had a lot of debate in my head about who I was going to keep, who I wasn't going to keep. Um, thankfully, they don't really have a young tight end that is worthy of a pick. <laughs> Having Mike Thomas and Traquan Smith as your two best wide receivers is a very good thing. Um, so you don't really need any more pass catching. Same with Alvin having Alvin Kamara. You know what? Drew Brees is great and should definitely be kept kept to keep them on this Super Bowl push. But at the same time, Teddy Bridgewater is a good, still young quarterback that is looking to be their quarterback of the future. And it's not really worth giving him up just to uh, have another roster spot somewhere. So... I uh I made the wild decision to keep two quarterbacks for this New Orleans team. Yeah, I think that's more than fair. Yeah, me and my roommate Dan, when I was uh, up visiting them and uh, was gone last week, uh, we had a lot of discussion on what moves the New Orleans Saints should make regarding keeping Breeze, Bridgewater, or both. Um, and this is kind of what we settled on. Uh, moving on to defense, uh, we start off with Marshawn Lattimore, Eli Apple, Marcus Williams, Von Bell, Sheldon Rankins, Cameron Jordan, Marcus Davenport, and Demario Davis, the former Jet. Uh, they just have a lot of good defensive players on here. Yeah, um, Eli Apple shockingly has been good for them. Demario Davis kept up the revival hilarious. that he had in New York when he went down to New Orleans, which is... Great for him. I wish the Jets kept him, but I understand why they let him walk. Cameron Jordan's been good forever. Uh, Sheldon Marshawn... Rankins has been pretty good for forever. Yeah, yeah. Marshawn Lattimore has been wonderful for them since he's been drafted. This is a very good defense for a change for the Saints. I was almost didn't um, pick Marcus Williams, and then I because you hear so much of him giving up that. Uh, what was it? The Minnesota Miracle is what they call it. Yeah. Where he gave up that pass to Stefan Diggs that, you know, scored the touchdown, won them the game, all that jazz. Um, I've just heard so much negativity about him because of that one simple play. In my mind, my first thought wasn't, oh, Marcus Williams, the very good safety for the New Orleans Saints. It was, oh, Marcus Williams, the guy who let up that long touchdown. And I just wanted to mention that it absolutely shouldn't. Marcus Williams is a phenomenal player for the Saints. Very young, very good. And he's going to be one of the key players for them for his, you know, hopefully the rest of his career. Every time I think of Marcus Williams, I think of Marcus Williams, the former Jet. (laughs) Fair enough. And um, I just just looked it up. And um, what team do you think he was last on? The New Orleans Saints. No, I believe it was the yeah the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Ooh. in uh, 2018. So I guess he's still active. Yeah, look Damn. at that. Good for other Marcus Williams. Yeah, I met him once. Yeah, nice, nice guy. guy. Really nice. Was guy. he uh, that same event where you met like Chad Pennington? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So I only met him for like a brief minute, but he was a really nice dude. It's weird that they'd have an active player going. 
It was it was split. It was half active, half retired. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I'm sure I realized it at the time when you told me, but I have since forgotten that detail. Which is uh, that's fine. All right, you ready to move on to the Atlanta Falcons? Let's do it. All right. So starting off, we have Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Don Julio Jones, Julio Hans. <laughs> Calvin Ridley, Alex Mack, Jake Matthews, James Carpenter, Austin Hooper, and Devonta Freeman. Um, little little bit of everything here. So we got franchise quarterback, former MVP, Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, one of the better wide receiver duos in the league. Um, three good offensive linemen and Mack, Matthews, and Carpenter. Good tight end and Austin Hooper. And Devonta Freeman coming back from injury, but is still, in my mind, one of the better running backs in the league. Yeah, this is a very complete offense when all cylinders are firing and when everyone's actually healthy and on the field. This is one of the most well-rounded offenses in, in uh, the NFL. I think they are seriously going to push uh, the Saints for this uh, division title this year. Yeah, I, th- I think defense will become a big factor in this. I th- yeah, I think it's going to come down to what the uh, Dan Quinn's defense can do to step up from last year. Yeah, which they desperately need to. Speaking of which, what players do you think they uh, protected? I don't Doesn't think matter. I'm going to tell yeah, you I'm anyway. Right there. So I was just cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Vic Beasley, Grady Jarrett, Tack, Tackerist McKinney goes Grady by Tack. Grady Jarrett feels like you said his name wrong and it should be like, you know, like, like uh, his last name should be Garrett instead of Jarrett. Like, yep. I don't know, Jarrett Grady instead of. Grady Jarrett. Yep. Yeah. But it is right. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sure it is, but it just <laughs> feels like <laughs> Jared Grady, more like Grady Jared. <laughs> so we also have Dion Jones, Desmond Trufant, Keanu Neal, Ricardo Allen, and Isaiah Oliver. Uh, when I first looked at this, uh, just looking through their depth chart and their defensive roster, I thought this was going to be a lot harder than it was. But it just came down to the fact that they had exactly eight players worth keeping. <laughs> so right. there it is. Falcons were kind of easy. Um, I feel like this is kind of it for Vic Beasley and Deion Jones. I think yeah. they don't have much of a le- l- leash left. Um, they're probably you know not going to get traded or cut or anything. But I think they're going to start to move on from more... Deion Jones than Vic Beasley, I I think. I always get the two confused, so I know one of them is um, a little bit better than the other, and the other's been more of a disappointment, but I'm not confident enough to call one out over the other because I don't want to sound dumb. So I'm going to yeah. loop him in and say one of them's on short leash, and the other one's kind of tied there uh, to his waist. Well, we've been seeing teams move on from uh, aging defensive players already. Uh, Gerald McCoy is no longer on the Bucks, who's next on our list to talk about, and... Um, he was seemingly the face of that defense forever since he'd been there. I missed uh, the name you said. Gerald McCoy. Gerald McCoy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, I don't, I, th- I think you're probably right. I, I think that the Falcons would be pretty prepared to make the move um, if Vic Beasley or Deion Jones don't right. have some kind of performance uh, maintenance or increase. I feel like the Vic Beasley or Deion Jones player that we are referring to I think is Vic Beasley. I think so too, but I just I'm not confident I think it's enough. Vic Beasley. Okay, we'll go with Vic Beasley because I can blame it on Josh now. You absolutely can. Um, I feel like he's in the same boat as the Steelers' Bud Dupree, where he hasn't been bad, but as a first round pick, you want to see more, and you don't know if he's worth the money that you know he's still going to ask. Being a former first rounder with decent numbers is you know what he's going to ask for. So. It's just more of a disappointment than him being a bad player. Of course. Um, so let's move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers um, with new head coach Bruce Arians, my favorite coach in the NFL. Um, honestly, if there was any coach active or retired that I would want to meet from college or NFL, outside of Joe Paterno because he's dead, um, RMP. Uh, it would be Bruce Arians. I just feel like he's such a cool, chill dude and so fucking smart at working with quarterbacks. I would just love to just sit down, have a drink with him, share a whiskey that I know he drinks religiously, and just talk quarterbacks with him. His book, The Quarterback Whisperer, is still one of my favorite football books I've ever read. Sports book in general. 
Uh, highly I recommend. I want to meet Nick Saban and ask him where he gets all those hats. Nick Saban? Isn't that the one with the hats? No, that was uh, Bear Bryant. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. He's dead, too. Well, Actually, <laughs> speaking of, Bruce Arians was the offensive coordinator for Bear Bryant. Oh, there you go. Um, at least uh, offensive coordinator or running back Maybe coach. Bruce I can't Arians remember. He gets details. all those hats then. Yeah, Bruce Arians wears Kangol hats every he day. He does. I don't understand it. It's his thing. I'll give it to him. So let's actually talk about the Bucks now. We got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Ali Marpet, Jameis Winston, uh, who was selected fourth amongst players I would keep, uh, Donovan Smith, O.J. Howard, who should have been higher, DeMar Dotson, and Alex Kappa. There's not a lot going on with the Buccaneers um, as far as offensive skill position players. Evans, Godwin, and Howard are all really, really good. And everyone else is really, really not. Um, so it really just came down to protecting the decent offensive linemen and Jameis Winston because why not? Yeah, I think Jameis Winston's on the fringe of I, this too. So I get why you protected him, but like, yeah. yeah, I think that's barely. The big NFL podcast and draft podcast I listen to, um, which I am 100% blanking on their name right now. Juicing the numbers. Not yeah, juicing <laughs> the numbers. Uh, but it's with Matt Miller, Mellow Miller, and... Uh, Sam Miller. No, fucking Connor Rogers, sorry. Uh, Stick to football, it's called. Thank you, Brain, for giving me something today. Um, they were just talking about whether or not uh, Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota were on their way to becoming NFL backups if they don't show real improvement this year. And while they all kind of agreed that Mariota would be a tremendous backup he, and he just kind of has a lot m less to show, he doesn't need to show as much is what I'm trying to say right. um, because he has been uh, – he has shown that effectiveness. Jameis Winston is either going to be – Bruce Arians quarterback for the next couple of years or he's probably going to be out of the league soon. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's going to I don't think he would last long as a backup with his poor track record both in terms of stats and wins and whatnot yep. and um allegations. Oh, he has so many of those. Yeah, but which you don't need to get into, but Bruce Arians, yeah. if there's anyone who could give a guy a second chance, it's him. Uh he talks about that a lot in his book, by the way. So let's move on to their defense which was just Rough, to say the least. Uh, Vernon Hargraves the third, Levante David, Ndamukong Sue, Vita Vea, Jason Pierre-Paul, Shaquille Barrett, Carl Nassib, and Justin Evans. They have a lot of good older players and a lot of young, unproven, haven't really lived up to expectations, expectations young players. And it's... We're trying to piece together a defense from that, especially since they just don't have any defensive backs at all. Um, but, yeah, there's not much to say. I mean, they traded out Gerald McCoy for Nadama and Sue, and it's just kind of sure, whatever. Um, I mean, Vita Vea, their first-round pick last year, was a lot better the second half of last year than he was the first half, but that's still nothing tremendous. So... Who knows? Um, yeah, this is a team that could yeah. be broken down by the end of next season. Right. Like, Who this knows? is a team that I could see having a top three pick next year. Um, so, not much to say here. Let's move on ahead to the Carolina Panthers to close out the NFC South. Uh, Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Matt Paradis, Tri Turner, Taylor Moten, Daryl Williams, and tight end Ian Thomas. So, we didn't protect, or at least I didn't protect Greg Olson here, um, just because I, much like with John O. Smith uh, and uh, the Titans, he's their young up-and-comer who I have seen a lot of that I really like his game. Um, and the guy he's going to be replacing is getting up there in his mid-30s, has that injury history, and is very much on his way out, so... Keep the young guy there. I mean, Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore are all pretty obvious. And then just trying to piece together an offensive line with the pieces they have there, um, which is nothing spectacular. 
On defense, uh, let's go with Luke Keekley because I feel like he should probably be protected on that team. A little bit. A little bit. We got Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe, the big fat man, Shaq Thompson, James Bradbury, Eric Reed, Dante Jackson, and Kawan Short. Um, again, this is one of those teams where they have a lot of good pieces, but really only one great one. I mean, you could lump in Gerald McCoy there, but he hasn't really uh, shown anything with the Panthers. Um, so it's it's hard to say how good he'll be with them, even though I'm confident he will be a very good player. Um, I mean, not a not a whole lot to say about the Panthers. I almost, I honestly can't tell you the last Panthers game I watched. I feel like I watched them play the Giants last year. Yeah, I'm. I don't I think I watched that game though. Feel like I watched part of it. I want to say. I I just I uh, yeah you know they're around. Um, they weren't good last year. No. Um. They were fine. We still don't know if Cam Newton's going to play this season. Fuck, he, I keep forgetting about that. I know they drafted Will Greer, who I absolutely love as a quarterback prospect. Um, has one of the prettiest deep balls around, but if he's their starting quarterback, despite how much I love him, he's still a third-round rookie quarterback that probably isn't going to do much for this team And as far as playoff hopes are concerned. Um, so it looks like Christian McCaffrey's going to have himself one busy year this year. Yeah, um, I got, yeah, I got nothing really to say about him, but uh, if they were to protect a total of 16 dudes, they seem like the dudes to do it. So Yeah, there's not much else on that team to protect. Uh, so let's move on to the NFC West and with some honestly very interesting teams. Um, this is probably the most interesting division, at least, outside of maybe the NFC East. Yeah, fuck it, who knows? Who cares? So we got the Seahawks. They're protecting Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, Dwayne Brown, Mike Upati, Rashad Penny, Jermaine Effetti, Ethan Pochick, and Justin Britt. I just want to point out that by far the two best offensive linemen on the Seahawks are both guys, are two guys that spent the vast majority of their career playing for other teams. The Seahawks are just fucking awful at developing offensive linemen. Well, that's because they had uh, Tim, not Tim Couch. Um, fuck, what was his name? Oh, I know, right? Tim Couch is the quarterback. I'm thinking of, um... oh hand. my God. Is it Hand? Huh? I'm trying to think. Uh, his last name might be Hand, but that might have been Penn State's old offensive line coach. It was someone notoriously bad with offensive lines who yeah, wanted just to be a bad offensive line coach for other teams. Tom Cable. Tom, I see. I knew it was a. Uh, it was. It was a thing. It was a noun. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, he fucking sucks. Uh, <laughs> do you? Oh my god. Do you know what he's doing with his life now? Uh, he was the offensive uh, line coach for the the Steelers after he went to, from the Seahawks. Not the Steelers because we just lost our. We just lost Mike Munchak, who is he went far somewhere. and away the best. Where is he now? He's with the Raiders. Raiders, okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that explains their... Um, what was the fucking dude's name for the Richie Raiders? Richie Incognito? Not Richie Incognito. Their first-round pick last year, Colin... Colin something? You're expecting far too much of me. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look it up. Here it is. Colton Miller. Sorry. Um, who was like... Before the Steelers took Terrell Edmonds and everyone was like, what the fuck are they doing? Colton Miller was the, what the fuck are you doing pick in the first round. Makes sense. Um, Sounds like the Raiders. Last year's first round had a bunch of those. Like Rashad Penny in the first round, too. That was exciting. Oh, well. Um, speaking of which, they don't protect Rashad Penny. Actually, they do protect yeah, Rashad yeah, Penny. Yeah, you have him right um, there. I'm stupid. They don't protect Chris Carson. Um, because when it comes down to it, Rashad Penny was their first-round pick last year, and even though he wasn't as good as Chris Carson, you can't bite the bullet that soon on a yeah. on a running Plus, we back. talked about this already, running yeah. backs, high turnover. Exactly. Yeah. Go with the young guy. Um, but, yeah, Dwayne Brown, Mike Upati, their two best guys are from Houston and the Cardinals, respectively. Um, Jermaine Effetti hasn't really proven much, but they are so desperate for offensive line that they need those first-round picks. Uh, same thing with E and uh, Pochick. Um, Tyler Lockett is really their only receiving option right now. Uh, that's not a rookie. So there it is. Russell Wilson, 
You got your work cut out for you. On defense, they went with Bobby Wagner. They didn't. I did. They went. I fuck me so hard. I <laughs> went with Bobby Wagner, KJ Wright, Shaquille Griffin, Trey Flowers, Puna Ford, one of the most underrated players in the NFL. And a 80 grade name right there. Absolutely. I was going to say it's 90 grade, but I know now that it, I've remembered that it only goes to 80. So, yeah. yes, 80 grade name. Ziggy Ansa, Bradley McDonald. McDougald, McDougald. I'm gonna say it's McDougald because that's funnier. And it, like a, it makes it sound like a verb. Like, yeah. bro, I got wicked McDougald <laughs> last night. <laughs> uh, I am not even sorry for that. Go fuck yourself, Bradley. You got a funny <laughs> last name, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, they are not an offensive team anymore. They really need to focus on that offense because their defense ain't great. Um, so I just tried to find some good players at each position. Um, which is easier said than done. They did not protect Sequeem Griffin because, believe it or not, I don't think expan- an expansion team is going to roll the dice with a one-handed inside linebacker. Um, Probably just not. Saying. Um, so let's move on to the Cardinals uh, because, man, I don't even know what that team's going to be next year. <laughs> they protect nobody. Yep. Uh, they don't protect any quarterback In because fact, they Kyler- sign up to be an expansion team. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, might as well. Yeah. Uh, they do not protect a quarterback because Kyler Murray is a rookie and doesn't need to. So instead, they go with Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, of course, DJ Humphreys, Marcus Gilbert, David Johnson, who I regrettably didn't think of until I had to pick a fifth player, J.R. Sweezy, Mason Cole, and Justin Pugh. J.R. Sweezy sounds like the stage name of J.B. Smoove's brother. Um, he sounds like a drug dealer. Like, who wants to be a rapper, so he goes with a fake name. It's tough to say because it's such a goofy name, which is why Uh, I I jumped to J.B. Smoove. (laughs) J.B. Smoove. But Sweezy is such a ridiculous name. I feel like you got to include that. So is Smoove. Yeah, but that's also not his name, so it doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. It sounds like like if J.B. Smoove had, like, a brother or a cousin that also wanted to be an entertainer. All right. I get it. I get it. I see your thing, too, but, like, that name is just... J.R. Sweezy's just so stupid. He was actually like a really good offensive lineman for a while. Yeah, well, now he's the butt end of my joke. Yep, <laughs> and he deserves it. Um, yeah, so I kind of went with the idea that if you don't protect Kyler Murray with every offensive lineman you have, he's going to die. And I'm not saying that to be dramatic. He might fucking die because he weighs 130 pounds. And any of you Kyler Murray lovers out there that want to fight me, I'll fucking do it because... I f- am not a fan of his. Um, but, yeah, get him a couple wide receivers, get him David Johnson, get him all the offensive line h- help you can, and that's the Cardinals' offense for you. On defense, we have Chandler Jones, Hassan Reddick, Patrick Peterson, Buda Baker, DJ Swearinger, Jordan Hicks, Brooks Reed, and Corey Peters. Um, again, outside of Patrick Peterson, Chandler Jones, no one's super great, but... R- Honestly, you know, a bit above average. I was surprised with the uh, talent the Cardinals had on defense. Uh, Hassan Reddick, Buda Baker, two very young but very good uh, players in their own right. DJ Swearinger, the human rocket. Um, Jordan Hicks, Brooks Reed, Corey Peters, fucking defensive linemen and such. No need to mention them. So let's move on over to the San Francisco 49ers, who are protecting Jimmy Garoppolo. As I used to refer to him, but it's Jimmy Garoppolo. No, it's That's actually Jimmy dumb. Garoppolo. Yeah, his last name. Really? Means, uh, no, is is there a hidden eye in there? No, two L's because oh, his last name yeah. means uh, spicy chicken. Ooh, good yeah. to know. Good to yeah. know. Actually, Hispanic. <laughs> uh, who is? We did not have the chance to protect his porn star ex girlfriend though, so you know, can't have everything on the forty nine. Sorry, Mia Khalifa. Yeah, sorry, not <laughs> Mia Khalifa. Much uglier porn star. Not gonna lie. Uh, Dante Pettis, George Kittle, Weston Richburg, Mike McGlinchey, Joe Staley, Mike Person, and Lakin Tomlinson. <laughs> Mike Person. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out of Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh my Mike gosh. And a person. Mike Person. Sounds like a uh like an out of the park simulation name game uh game name, you know what I mean? I'm really hoping it's not Pearson and I just spelled his name wrong in this, but I don't care. No matter what to look he's it now up. he's Mike now Mike Person. person. Um, but yeah, protect that offensive line. Um, 
they had some other wide receivers. They had some running backs I could protect. But I had the same thought process of if you're super deep there, if you lose one of them, you're not that hurt. Whereas if you lose some offensive line, that will hurt you. So protect what you have to protect. Right. On defense, we have Richard Sherman, Jason Verrett, two very, very good uh, cornerbacks. D. Ford and DeForest Buckner, two very, very good edge rushers. Fred Warner and Kawan Alexander, two very, very good inside linebackers. And Eric Armstead and Solomon Thomas, one very good defensive lineman and one guy who hasn't put it all together yet. But third overall pick, one of those guys uh, um, like Telvin Smith, he had some serious family issues. Uh, I believe his sister, um, uh, I believe his sister uh, killed herself early last year. Um, so he was never in the right headspace to really compete, and he yeah, has been can't quite blame him for that. Um, yeah, um, it's not something you can really hold against him. And both he and the 49ers have been very open about him not being in the right headspace at all. Um, so I think they really need to uh, give him the chance he needs to perform. Uh, and if he can, man, that is a an absolutely wild uh, defense. Um, we are missing Jimmy Ward, who was a phenomenal free safety in his own right. Um, but I felt the need to give Solomon Thomas the nod there just because of his uh, draft pedigree and um, not really having that chance to show anything. Um, and Jimmy Ward just doesn't really kind of – he's been playing all over the place for them, doesn't really have a home. Um, so I feel like he was the odd man out. But like Xavier Rhodes, he was the uh, – easy pick for selection for the 49ers um, just because of the talent he could bring to that team still very young so anything you got to say on the 49ers no not really they're they're, they're a defense they've also done what I'm going to keep calling the Chicago style rebuild their defense is very good mm -hmm. their offense is also uh, has good pieces but isn't quite there yet in part because Garoppolo was hurt all of last season right I um, think I think that's this is the team that takes the biggest leap next year I think they uh, really push the Rams for this division title and are a playoff team. But yeah, can't can't protect everyone on that defense, so someone's nope. got to go. Sorry, Jimmy, but you are now the one of the marquee players on the new San Antonio Roughnecks. So this is it, Portland the Beaver final Tales. Of That's what I'd go with. The Portland Beavertons. Beaver Tails. Beaver Tails. Yeah. I'm actually all about that. I'm going to change the name. This is now the <laughs> Portland Beaver Tales. Um, I'd say change it, but I forgot that we're not on Google Drives. At least you are. I'm not. Um, so yeah, it took me a good count. like, like, like the entirety of the first. I was to be like, huh? None of these, uh, none of these changes are happening on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oops. Um, so let's close this out. The 32nd of 32 teams, the final one we're going to discuss in the NFC and the final one that we're going to discuss ever because I'm never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this like in a month from now, the NFL announces. Uh, uh, and we do it again. again. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, well. Secretly, I would love it and have an excuse to do this with like real parameters that I can follow. Plus, it'd be a great springboard. Oh, absolutely. Um, so let's close it off strong with the St. Louis, fuck me up, <laughs> the Los Angeles Rams. We're so sorry, St. Louis. <laughs> oh, God. Can we uh, be the uh, Portland Beaver Tales that also play in St. Louis like the Tampa Bay Rays? I was going to say like a, like a Rays-Montreal kind of deal. Oh, God. St. Louis needs a team so bad. So we have Jared Goff, Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks. Andrew Whitworth, Rob Haverstein, or Steen, I don't know the difference, Todd Gurley, Austin Blythe, and Joseph Noteboom. Um, again, I kind of had the same thought as um, uh, kind of like Le'Veon Bell, where I didn't know if I should keep Todd Gurley because of how much the Rams love Daryl Henderson and how much his injury history scares both me and the Los Angeles Rams. Well, plus, it's not just in history anymore. He now has arthritis in his name. Right. Um, and that is severely affects his future. But then again, he's Todd Gurley, and there's no way you can not protect him. So there it is. Uh, protecting all Agreed. of that, almost all of that offensive line as well. Uh, keeping those two just truly phenomenal wide receivers. And, of course, you're keeping Jared Goff. 
Um, so that's that. Let's move on to the defense. Uh, who do you think they're going to protect first? <laughs> um, uh, let's go with Aqib Tlaib. Uh, yes, Aqib Tlaib. Uh, he was the fifth player I protected on that defense. Oh, who could it be then, Corwin? Aaron Donald, the mighty god of thunder. Aaron Donald Duck, <laughs> the mighty god of wearing a uh, suit top with no pants. <laughs> 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 oh fuck you! Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Aaron Donald, you gotta protect him. Dante Fowler, Marcus Peters, Eric Weddle, Akib Talib, Nickel Roby Coleman, who is their Nickelback, and I love that connection so much. <laughs> it is the That's greatest great. thing that. ever. John Johnson. Imagine every player had to be named after the position. Ah, uh, yes, Billy Quarterback. And David Punter. Cooper Receiver Cup. <laughs> and then uh, Corey Littleton. I don't know if I said your name. Uh, but they got a safety named John Johnson. And I think this is one of those free agency things where, okay, he's a good player. But for fan service, we're going to keep the guy with the funny name. Right, of course. Um, along with Nicole Roby Coleman. Um, it's actually really funny how, like, Almost all of these players were not drafted by the Rams outside of Aaron Donald. Yeah. Dante Fowler was a Jaguar. Marcus Peter was a Chief. Eric Weddle was a Charger and a Raven. Akib Talib was... Bronco. Bronco. But where was he drafted? Was he not drafted by the Broncos? I don't think so. Um, I want to say he was like a Buccaneer. That's going to be my guess. Uh, Nickel Ruby Coleman, I believe, was always a Ram. And I have absolutely no idea about Corey Littleton and John Johnson. And I don't really care. I assume you're looking up the Akib Talib. I am indeed. Um, yeah, yeah, he's Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Yeah, I also spent one season in New England before going yes. to Denver. Uh, I forgot about that. I did know that. I forgot about that. Was that the Super Bowl year? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, he was very good for them. Yeah, I know. I and I knew that, and I completely yeah, forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, guys, you spend one year somewhere. It especially New England, right? Like, uh, didn't um, the Raw Rebus? Yes, thank you. I. Knew you could look to your left. <laughs> <laughs> I am sitting two and a half feet away from a Darrell Rivas jersey yes, you at are. eye level. Um, but <laughs> fuck it, we know I'm really fucking dumb. Anyway, um, anything you want to say about the Rams or the NFC as a whole? Um, Rams in particular, they've seemed to be very smart with the deals that they've given out to put together teams. Uh, they have that luxury right now because of Jared Goff's rookie contract, so I'm sure that's going to change once that very, very is true. eventually up. But as of right now, their front office has seemingly done a very good job with acquisitions. So even if they did have additional players that they had to give up, I'm sure that they wouldn't be too hurt about it because their scouting department and front office is seemingly on top of things. NFC as a whole, um, nothing really startling or jumping out. I'm very excited because I have some ideas of who's going to be on this expansion team. Um, I haven't actually looked at it yet, so I don't know for sure, but I'm very excited to see what it's like. I agree. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring one up, th one other, fucking Christ, the words today just are not working. Um, so the Rams, before we move on to the expansion team, I was talking about this with someone the other day, I forget specifically who, so if you're listening to this, don't let me know because I don't really care. Um, do you view Jared Goff as a quarterback who performs because of his skill or because of the team and system around him it's so tough to say in football like do you do you view him as a guy who elevates the team around him or is elevated by the team around him mm, oh it's so tough i'm going ah oh, damn it. i really don't know I'm, i i i i want to say is elevated by but I just I don't watch enough Rams games to have any confidence in that answer. But I'm going to say elevated by. I'm also going to say that only because of the absolutely high, like super high level of Sean McVay's offense and the skill position players around him. Yeah. But at the same time, if you didn't, if you had a lesser, like if you took him and put him on the, the Cardinals, yeah, or the Bengals. I think he would be a kind of guy who would still elevate the players around him. I very much believe in Jared Goff. Um, I still uh, view him as a better passer than Carson Wentz. 
maybe not quarterback as a whole, but I view him as a better passer. Um, I believe in the talent. I believe in his future. And I think he is uh, going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL um, in the next few years. But that's all i got to say about the NFC. Josh, you want to take us out? If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at JuicingPod. If you want to follow us via or send us an email, you can do so at JuicingTheNumbers at gmail.com. And if you want to find everything that was spoken about t- today's episode for the NFC expansion, you can do so at JuicingTheNumbers.Wixsite.com slash website. And until fucking, I guess, Monday, um, y'all have a good one. 